What's up, Zbrushers? Welcome back to Z Viewer. My name is Ricky, and today I wanted to go over a little workflow I've been toying around with. Um, in some of the previous videos, we went over some hard surface techniques for generating uh, armor and things of that nature, but I wanted to see what we could do in uh, the area of jewelry design, right? Uh, bear in mind, I'm not a jeweler, so uh, take any of this with a grain of salt, but I wanted to see what ZBrush can do. Uh, in the past, we've used things like uh, shadow box and uh, other techniques. So I wanted to uh, you see what we can do inside of ZBrush to generate some designs, and then um, and then try to create some topology and see what we can make. Okay, so what? There are a couple of ways that you can uh, draw things out. You can utilize this quick sketch up here and uh, it just gives you a canvas that you can draw on with uh, symmetry. Uh, but my thinking behind it is if the end goal is to generate topology, uh, why not just use a plane, subdivide a plane, uh, use a brush, and then um, you use your painting tools and then just draw out your design. Simple enough. And so let me let me um let me duplicate this here. I'm just gonna fill this and turn that one off. Fill it. Color fill object. Alright. Okay. So I'm just gonna use my standard brush with the with the uh, free hand on. And I've gone through and I've set my stroke up to something like uh, the lazy for the lazy mouse up to uh, 32 for the lazy radius just to give me give me something some nice fluidity right and so just going to draw out a design right nothing crazy and this is these are just ideas right now I'll show you where this will come in useful in a minute so I'm just gonna Draw that out, and then I'd like to, I don't know, I, I kind of like this idea of shape coming around here. Okay. So I was thinking like this could be like a necklace or something like that. Who, who knows? I mean, those might... Uh, those might might need to be rounded out a little bit, but uh, let's let's see what we can come up with here. Okay, so from this, let's say this is this is our design. We want to go with this. We got to start generating some topology. Now we could do a couple things. We could um, we could uh, mask by uh, by color. But I'm not going to do that. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to generate a couple of pieces of topology. So we're going to go through, grab our masking brush, just go all, go through here. We might need to drop that down a little bit. And you can even um, with your masking brush on, you can turn on lazy mouse. And that will make your life easier. There we go. Probably turn down a little bit. This will help you stay somewhat true to form, right? And remember, this is just a general outline, right? Go through. Just want to make sure that uh, you don't have any like areas of white in there because you'll get some holes in your topology so let me check this I'm gonna turn off the poly paint and you come back up here there we go and so that'll let me know how things are going I can actually come back in here See, there's a little area there that uh, needs some TLC. 
I'm just gonna we're gonna run with that okay and so from this uh, we'll just uh, like in the previous videos we'll just do an extraction right now I can do um, I can add some thickness but what I'm gonna do is just cut out any amount of thickness and I don't want it to be doubled because then that's just going to cause geometry to go through the back end and uh, that's not what we're looking for. I want a flat piece of geometry. So I'm going to extract this and then I'm going to say accept. You're not going to see it yet because it's existing in the same space. Now if I go over here, turn that off. Now look at that. I've got this lovely little piece of geometry. Turn on symmetry. I can actually come through and clean some of this up. Whenever you're working with a piece that is thin like this, it's easy to lose track of it. So um, I'm going to go down here to my display properties and uh, turn double on so that I never lose track of where it is all right so I'm gonna call this good uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through here and smooth all this stuff out so what I want really want to get to at this point is I need to Z remesh this see right now it pulled from the geo that was on the plane which was subdivided so it could pick up the poly paint so I'm gonna go to geometry Z remesher and I'm gonna drop that down pretty low see just just to see what it gives me all right I'm going to hit it one more time. One more time. Okay. All right. I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, probably come through and clean some of this stuff up. But, you know, this this gives me some other ideas, some other shape ideas I might be able to use um, later. So let's go ahead and get our other pieces of geometry before we get into the Z modeler. So I want to get back over here. Turn off the poly frame. I'm gonna hide everything else. And then I'm gonna clear that mask and um, turn my poly paint back on. Okay. So essentially, this is just gonna end up being two pieces. It's gonna be this bottom piece and this piece up here. So. I wouldn't worry so much about keeping it too exact. You, you don't have to keep a solid edge whenever it's whenever you're drawing out this mask, because as you can see on the on the uh, the Z remesher kind of clean things up pretty nicely for us, right? So we want to try and let ZBrush work to our advantage, right? So I think I think this is gonna be okay. Let me um, turn that off. So I definitely want to come through and fill this in a little bit. Now you could, if you if you like to use an uh, external program, you could actually come through with. Um, like if you draw something out in Photoshop or or um, Sketchbook, Sketchbook's got a nice uh, symmetry tool in there. So if you draw the design in there, you can actually turn that into an alpha. And then you could just mask by alpha, and um, you know you can get to this point even faster, right? So I'm just trying to I'm trying to give you guys some concepts to go by, right? So let's extract this piece. Extract, accept. Then we're gonna go over to you. Turn that plane off. Probably not gonna mess with that anymore. And you're gonna have to adjust the display properties on each individual piece. So there we go. Make sure symmetry is on. Otherwise, uh, the zebra mesher is going to give me some 
funky results. So again, we're going to drop that all the way down. I'm going to go ahead and leave uh, adaptive on. It's not a big deal. And there we go. We got some uh, topology that seems to be useful. I like that a lot better. As you can see, I like to I like to hit this a few times. So what I'll probably do is go through. It seems to have a problem whenever I'm going across the um, line of symmetry. Uh, whenever you're trying to stitch things. So I'm probably going to go through and close this. And I'll show you a way to work around it. So... Let's go ahead and jump into the Z modeler. All right, so we gotta start shaping this thing. Um, so let's hop to it. Uh, the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to address this issue right here. And so what we want to do is um, we need to bridge these. So I'm in the Z modeler. I'm going to bridge uh, two edges, right? So we're gonna bridge this edge to that edge and it's gonna give me that but if you don't notice uh, we're gonna run into a problem with the line of symmetry here so here is a quick way of dealing with this so if we just go over to our uh, modified topology under the geometry and just mirror and weld boom there we go alright and so then we can go through and I want to stitch these I'm going to stitch this to that. There we go. All right. So now, now this will play a little bit nicer. And um, so let's let's start shaping this. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be shaping um, the points, right? Um, but I don't. I want I wanted to uh, simplify it so for now I'm going to um, delete by symmetry All right and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using my mask lasso alright so what I'm going to do with this lasso is I'm just going to grab verts start with this outer edge and this will make sense in a minute so I'm going to grab those I'm going to invert the mask and then I'm just going to use my transpose line to pull things back because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to establish a shape right so I'm gonna keep this pretty pretty simple right and this technique I actually have to um, credit mr. Uh, Musashi Dan McGrath he's like he's like this uh, Scottish samurai warrior that happens to do uh, work in ZBrush. He's got a really great channel, guys. You gotta, you gotta go uh, check him out. Uh, he's done some really great in-depth tutorials, uh, especially whenever it comes to hard surface. And um, you know, he's always got something interesting going on over there. He's got this really good tank tutorial that I think you guys would appreciate very much. So let me go back through. This time, I want to grab this inner edge. pretty much just do the same thing this is gonna kinda get a little wonky um, I'm not too concerned with it uh, simply because I'm just not um, so you could um, come through with your clip curve I always get this wrong 
don't know why. There we go. And that way it's just kind of it kind of uh, squishes all those up to the same line. All right, so now that I've shaped this, um, I need to um, start getting this thing stitched back together. So what I want to do is I want to mirror and weld in both the Z and in the X. Now the problem that you're going to run into is that because this was pulled from a plane, it's sitting, um, it's, it's crossing the Z. So you need to pull this out just a little bit. Um, Otherwise, it's going to give you a response and say, hey, uh, there's no geometry, dude. So um, we're going to do that. And then we might as well, before we mirror across, we might as well start uh, stitching this guy together. <laughs> 